Welcome. Welcome to Sleep Drunk. To Sleep Drunk. Where it's been a minute. Like, like, it has been like, a, like a whole minute. It's been like, what, a month and a half since we last recorded? Yeah, uh, but as you guys are well aware, the the Rona is really doing it to everybody. So yeah. that was really doing it and to finals. me, at least, during school. I'm sure it was probably doing yeah. it to you in its own way. Yeah. Um, but uh, now finals are over and yeah. the summer has begun. Yes. Thank God. Yeah, thank God. And I think it was also... So the break, I think, was useful for twofold. A, it was nice having time to survive classes, which is nice. It's nice to be able to get through classes. And also, I think, I know at least I personally, I was starting to burn out creatively. Like, I, I think... were you saying that. Yeah, like, so, I think yeah, creativity, I, think about that. I think this is something that uh, non-creatives, to for lack of a better term, I think don't get as much where i think creativity it's not like a tap like you can't just turn it on and off it's very much like a well where you can draw water and it'll be full initially but over time wells become depleted and they need time to like replenish from local aquifers which is why like wells have at least old timey wells with shallow aquifers i'm not going to get into the science of it because i'm not a geologist but I think I just needed some time it's to... also re- just unnecessary. Yeah, yeah it's very unnecessary. <laughs> it's a metaphor. I need, yeah, I, I needed some time to, like, replenish, let the well of creativity refill, because I'm the primary creative mind behind Sleep Drunk. I think that's something I could comfortably say. Yeah, that's mostly your job. So I think it was nice to just have some time to come up with new ideas, write them down. Uh, so... However, instead of going right into those new ideas, this is episode 48. There is actually another 48 recorded, but it was recorded at the peak of my burnout. So it's literally just me talking about spaghetti sauce. Oh, we're going back to 48. Yeah, I remember we talked about it in the in like a text chain a while oh, ago. Oh, that's the one where you went on about spaghetti. Yeah, that's the one where I'm on like spaghetti for. I said 20 minutes, it was only like 10, and I re- realized that like that's not particularly high quality. So the main point, I might we might I'm publish still, it at some point. Maybe. I still laugh every time I get out my craft parmesan cheese at the fact that you called it sawdust it, it, it doesn't because, like i'm just not going to get out my cheese grater every time i want spaghetti it's just not the thing for me is that like parmesan doesn't even really make your cheese grater that dirty like you just like wipe it with like a wet paper towel and it'll be fine like parmesan isn't a particularly like since such it's a dry also not cheese that much better uh, i think it cheese is cheese grater I, I don't it's not like pepper where it's like freshly cracked or something i, I think it still makes a noticeable difference my meaning is that there's just those anti-caking agents they put in it that a don't work all the time and b like make it taste chalky. Uh, okay, that, we'll publish that episode at some point as like a blooper reel or something, and we'll just cut the best bits. At least I, I might do that at some point. So, but Oof. my bottom line is was I think it's worth making fresh spaghetti sauce. Adam Argusi has a video on it. Who's like my my culinary senpai. So yeah, that that was the main point. And then discussion avenue. And I think the main discussion I knew there was that my computer does in fact work now. It's just the mouse pad doesn't work or it doesn't click. So, yeah. But I think... That, have you ever ordered a replacement or... Uh, not yet. On I've one? just kind of been living with it. And I, I'm at a point where I feel like I don't need to get a replacement. Like, it's not, it's not significantly degrading the usage of my laptop. So, for now, I'm just chilling. So... Mm, yeah. I, I wish I were like that. But... Anytime anything like that happens to me, it's just, it, I, I know that it's there, I know that it's not the way it should be, and it bothers the living sh- oh. out of me until it works correctly. Yeah, I understand that. I'm like that with certain things, but with my theater, it's like, it's working, it's doing it's doing what it needs to do, so for now, I'll leave it be. I'm not especially, I think, I have to double check with this, but I think once stores open back up, I think I might still have Apple Care on my computer, and if I do that, I can just have them fix it. And I won't have to bother doing it myself. And I think the down payment isn't that much. So I have to double yeah. check that. But yeah. So when I bought it, also I think they were doing a promotion and they threw an Apple Care. I think for the most part, I think most stuff is sort of resuming to normal in my area. Because yeah. uh, in my area, it really, you know, the number of cases really has not ever been high and it's not exploding now and people are getting really sick of it i mean as they are everywhere so they're just starting to do what they want and things are open for the most part yeah i think up around here just because it is near a major city cases have still been growing but i think yeah we're entering i think that the governor calls phase one uh it's like half capacity things but yeah yeah so because i think this region was deferred a little bit in the from the statewide plan just because like 
a, a lot of like million like an, or, there's an order of magnitude more people here than the rest of the state yeah one or maybe think two could orders be partially due to populations that unfortunately can't afford to care about this and still yeah. have to show up to work otherwise yeah. they can't feed their children yeah that's true yeah but so the episode right right we were talking about right we, there's an episode we're doing right so um yeah we are we are recording yeah after all. so um in light of the fact that we've been gone for like a month and a half uh we're gonna do I was gonna call it discussion Avenue Double XL, but this is this is more like like discussion interstate, discussion highway, um, d- dis- discussion discussion autobahn. Yeah, discussion autobahn. So we're just gonna go over what's happened <laughs> in the past month and a half. So that actually is really good because it starts with an A. <laughs> it does. It does. So this is like D auto. <laughs> so um, given that, I guess we are going to. Now hop into our really expensive German car that we rented because we're visiting Germany of chat and then obnoxiously drive alongside average citizens of debate on the discussion Autobahn. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. That's a thing. So I have a friend that lives in Germany and like you can tell when people are tourists because like even though the yeah, Autobahn doesn't have a set speed limit, like range, you're right. there's like there's like a general speed limit of everyone right. just kind Reasonable of agrees on one. Reasonable and prudent, I'm sure. Yeah, everyone is, like is the agrees case on one. The and then the tourists will just pull up and just 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 boom. So they'll just realize, hey, no speed limit, two hundred miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> All right, you just kind of go with the flow of traffic, yeah, and that's yeah. how you maintain safety. But yeah, but tourists. And then you let Americans into your country. <laughs> yep. 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 So, Alex, how has the past month and a half treated you? Um, well, finals were sort of uh, stressful, but it wasn't due stress, if that makes any sense. I, like, I was sort of worried about what classes I was going to use the pass-fail on and what classes I wasn't. And I was trying to like calculate my grades, and then my grades turned out to be nothing like I was anticipating. In a good way or a bad so, way? in a good way okay but still it was like a lot to worry about and juggle until thankfully the university decided to give us an extension on when we had to decide yeah that was nice and um it ended up that i got an a in all of my classes except for differential equations where i got i think he didn't actually give us a letter grade on blackboard and i had already pass failed it by that time so i have the xs but i think it would have been a b minus okay so technically for the semester i have awaited 13 credit 4.0 gpa awesome that's great damn and then other than that this summer i've just uh i don't know i've been looking for things to do so i've been working on some really nerdy personal projects that also help me in certain ways like a hidden device in my living room that lets me control the volume of the TV <laughs> and is wirelessly controlled. Sneaky, sneaky Alex. That's yep. sneaky. And uh, some questionably legal activities that I did with uh, a couple friends of mine that we codenamed Operation Stay on Our Own Property. Legal at sleepdrunk.net. Yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you can definitely just email legal at sleepdrunk.net yeah. um, for any further questions on that topic and that topic only. And uh, also did some uh, what we call bullying with the boys, what we in the biz call bullying with the boys, uh, two nights in a row over the weekend, just because we could. Yeah. On a side note, regarding the term bullying, this is something I just find really interesting that the phrase has become just so deeply and utterly debased by the internet. Like in the in the two thousands, that was a term used exclusively by the Bloods, uh, the notorious yeah, street they didn't gang. Put, the C's. They didn't want to say yeah. C in anything. Yeah. Which I, I just found that very, like, kind of yeah, funny. It's supposed to replace the term coolin, so there's yeah, like, so, like right, well, just, we can't the say term C because the Crips exist, so, so, so coolin. <laughs> Which is fine, just find interesting. But yeah, continue. Um, well, actually, that's pretty much it. It's, you know, been a pretty boring summer. That's a, that's a very standard Discussion Avenue length, mine. I had an eventful. Well, okay, path. actually, I, I can go on another little tangent. I <laughs> okay. suppose I can open another tab. I mean, like I said, um, this, is, this is the autobahn. This is the whole episode. Yeah, this is the autobahn. <laughs> so let me just switch lanes, uh, and then rev, rev it up to two hundred. 
Um, so I don't know. I don't think I brought this up on the show. And although I am a, a relatively private person, I uh, I will bring it up on here. I've I've delved into the rabbit hole of uh, wonderful new age dating apps. Oh, those being like Tinder and Bumble. And I must say, at first I thought I was having like a decent amount of luck, but I'm not having any luck. See. See, Tinder's algorithm isn't isn't full, isn't like it's not wholly fair. It boosts, it'll give you a like shadow boost based on recent updates to your profile and how new your profile is. So like you'll have a, a shadow boost of a little while, and then it'll go really dry as it does for everyone. Something I can speak from experience Oof. for. So yeah, you have to you have to learn how to game the algorithm. It, it's not just gonna like show you everything in your area, and it won't show you to everything. So. Yeah, so maybe I can just do like subtle changes. Yeah, to my so I bio think it normally it'll and shadow and boost you when you upload a new picture and change your bio. If, if you do two of those at the same time, I think you'll get the best boost. And then I think just changing your changing your um, adding a picture will give you a little boost as well. Yeah, hmm. is is it just changing a picture, like removing, and then I think it's adding. adding I'm not sure. One. Like I haven't done a ton of research into this. And also, I wonder how well it is at detecting. Like, what if I were to export another photo like the same photo at a different quality or to a different format and then upload it i'm not sure i'm not sure i, I haven't done too much research into this i think this is a i think this, these are apps that is like tinder is an app that most college students have like i think it's a yeah, pretty like common i feel like at thing. this point i'm not probably going to have any luck this summer yeah. especially because you know nobody wants to uh exactly see really, other nobody people. wants to affiliate with someone that doesn't go to their their school yeah and not to mention just huge meeting strangers ass. during a global pandemic doesn't seem like the well that's yeah. actually surprisingly i feel like have uh, I've been a proponent for a lot of people because they're bored out of their minds yeah, so i think that's it's more like talking with people than meeting with people well not necessarily like most people are looking for a reason to get out that's fair it's just be like you promise me you don't have rona <laughs> and then meet up and the thing is i don't know what you're gonna do i mean but uh stand six feet apart and have a slightly yeah, loud conversation apart and and kind of yell at each other <laughs> and because eat you can't foods. very well because it's it's, re- it's really windy and rainy out like have like ha- like have them buy packaged foods and then venmo them and Actually, then stand six enough, feet apart and eat i'm not sure if foods. this this is probably not the case up in uh up in that area but in my area, uh, restaurants have started to open their patios. I mean, restaurants here are doing takeout, and I think patios restaurants are opening. Restaurants here have been doing takeout the entire days. time. I think but, patios uh, are opening in a few days. Patios have been open here for a little while, and I don't know that they're. You know, obviously, it's not everywhere. Obviously the uh the whole dynamic is still changed and i don't know if there's you know reservation lines etc but i mean that could be that could be one option i suppose for things to do if you just want to get out of your house yeah yeah i think i've I've been on tinder as well not that much because i feel like whenever i use tinder because i've had an account for a little while like just out of boredom i've only ever actually gone on one date from tinder like i remember that and like it's just more a matter of like i can't really be bothered i just do it more just for fun to talk to people i think but yeah i think that's a healthier way to look at yeah. it because i think if you if you spend too much time on those i feel like that can become yeah. something that uh is a larger part of how you see yourself than it yeah. should be like i just so i tr- i try not to use it too much just because i feel like i get like really hooked on it some like if i like i end up just going down like I guess like a, a T-hole, it's like a, it's like a K-hole, which I think people describe using ketamine. I think that's just completely the wrong description. I'm I'm not sure. I'm probably using, probably butchering everything. But I this just doesn't like, sound like a yeah. good metaphor. <laughs> well, it sounds like, like a metaphor that's going to get us sued. Yeah. Legal yeah. <laughs> Legal <laughs> I don't advocate the use of the recreational usage of ketamine. D- don't don't and do nor drugs. Are we associating the use of recreational ketamine with the use of Tinder? Yeah. Uh. Don't, don't don't sue me, Tinder, please, please. <laughs> um, but so. I, I like I feel like I just I end up getting way too into it and then I start getting like upset and I end up wasting a ton of time. The other thing is that it can be a huge time sink. Like 
It can be. Just a and massive I, I can waste definitely of time. see where it could be more of one if you live in a like a, a vastly more populated yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like in my area, I've actually gotten to the point where every time I check it, I can pretty much hit I, I haven't ever not done that since the initial you know build up but I, now every time i open the app I, I swipe through all the new people and then it tells me there's no new people in my area yeah i think i also think that is another algorithmic thing where they won't show you ever especially if it's in a densely populated area they won't show you everybody they'll stagger it because that that's a that's actually a really common like one of the psychological hooks that apps can use to maintain your attention is like they trickle you content instead of like feeding you it all at once yeah. and burning you out absolutely well that's why they like limit your swipes yeah yeah but in my area i i really wouldn't doubt it since i i set my range to be relatively close because i don't want to yeah you know drive across uh the state capital to meet someone you know yeah. i'd want to meet yeah. someone from my side of the city but i'm yeah. not near the city really and I live in an exurb, which is not very densely populated, so I wouldn't really doubt that I've actually hit all the people in the area. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, just b- b- caution if, if you choose to engage. Also, like, make sure you're 18. Like, don't... Yeah, don't be one of those annoying-ass people that says, I'm actually... Like, you, you put your age as 18 or something, and you say, I'm actually 16 or something. Yeah. Like, no one wants or to someone screw who's with like, that. Get off. I ran into Go. someone who is... Uh, Go 22, meet someone at school. whose age is 22 and they say they're 18, so... Oh, yeah, that that's just a dead giveaway that you've had that account <laughs> since you were underage and yeah. it won't let you change your age. Yeah. I see that stuff all the time. So, like, don't... If you're underage, don't. Just don't. You could get in trouble. You could get someone else in trouble. Just wait. Just wait. And also, like, there's not that many people on there that do do that, so, like, you know, if you are of age, you're not going to want to screw with somebody that's underage, yes. nor should you. Yes, because you can get arrested. <laughs> if you're underage, then, you know, no one's going to want to, like, you know, you're, you're really just wasting your time and everyone else's time. Yeah, no one wants to uh, play golf with you. Yeah. Yeah. No one wants to make eye contact with yeah. you. So, be safe. Also, when you're playing golf, make sure to wear gloves so you don't get so you don't get bumps on your hands and blisters good advice i suppose and aids <laughs> not necessarily relevant advice but it, it is advice it's all, i think you, it, you can never then you again can never, i could yeah. say i i could say make sure to um go to myrtle beach and join the crowds on the beach it's not good advice but it is advice <laughs> yeah so be safe don't 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 lie a message from sleep truck <laughs> opening another um tab miniature tab i saw a reddit post that referred to myrtle beach as the walmart of all beaches and i found it very fitting see i'm not a beach person but even i get that yeah 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 i feel like if if myrtle beach is walmart the outer banks is like target it's nothing special but it's a little better i'm just not a beach person i've been to like I'm not really five either, beaches in my entire life. I can life. definitely appreciate. I've had like five beach, beach trips you know? in my entire it's life. Just, I can appreciate any vacation, but it's yeah. not like something that, like, um, w- this is a common question: beach or mountains? Mountains. Yeah, my, my my whole family we're all mountain people. Like we're we're all mountain people. I think I'm a mountain man. Yeah, my beard's a foot long. <laughs> I mean, I think all of my favorite trips have been into the mountains, like both like the Himalayas in India, Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, um, the Shenandoah National Park. I used to go there all the time right. as a kid. Uh, I'm, I'm a mountain guy. I just don't get the chance to go to the mountains, I suppose. And like, like I, I, I go uh, to the mountains mm. relatively frequently, but I don't do anything there. Like it's driving through them on I-64 or something. That's fair. Whereas, like, you know, all the all the trips that I've done with friends have been to the beach. That's so, fair. like, while the ones that are most m- memorable are probably from the beach, I still think I would prefer to go to the mountains. Yeah. No. I, because I, it's not like I'm a huge, like, swimming fanatic or surfer or fisherman or really anything like that. Like, I'm just at the beach to get a little beach time in and like i don't have any use to go more than once a year yeah see for me whenever i take vacations i like to be like 
I generally want to get away from people. Like, I just like... Yeah, like, I understand that, my too. My favorite trips the are where, like, I'm super isolated. And I can just spend some time, like, with myself to think about yeah, my thoughts. Yeah, exactly. Which is why some of my favorite th- the vacations that we do are renting a cabin at a state mm. park and then you know going kind yeah, of great and stuff those are great those are great and another thing i guess I, the beach is very repetitive it is know? like if, if you rent a house for an entire week and you're there doing the same thing every day for a week it's like all right yeah the beach know, is let's good do for something like three days now. yeah it's good for like a long weekend yeah unless there's like i don't know something else going on there that's interesting like if you're doing other kinds of um or visiting other kinds of places i don't know if there's like interesting tourist destinations yeah. that aren't necessarily tourist destinations. i don't know just seeing different things or like there's a um, let's just call it a a nightlife yes yeah, so if you're engaging in debauchery engaging in activities of the night an evening debauchery yeah i mean i think when I went to the, so when I went in Winterberg, when I went to Phuket in Thailand, I think we only had like we only spent like one or two days at the actual beach. Other times we spent like exploring the city, eating seafood, like took some trips. So yeah, beaches are fun, but I'm just I'm not a beach guy. Follow up yeah. question: mm-hmm. When you were doing all that stuff, were you following a a rigid? schedule or are you just sort of doing it as you please uh i mean we booked a couple of tours we were just kind of going as we wanted to like you're just kind of going by ear okay good we booked like two tours i think that, that, that sounds like the absolute you know exactly how i would go about a vacation mm-hmm. for some reason whenever i go on a vacation with my family my dad feels the need to structure everything make an itinerary not really an, an itinerary of sorts but like it, it's sort of a loose itinerary where we're, we have to do these set things in a day and then you know there's not a lot that's just kind of left to be done on the fly and that's like when i'm vacationing i don't want to worry about all that yeah, shit i just exactly. want to kind of do things as i as i please yeah like I, I maybe sometimes i'll keep a list of things i want to do but i'm not gonna be like oh on this day at 3 p.m we are going to sit on the beach for our 45 minutes of prescribed beach time like yeah that's just stupid yeah like i just feel like the whole point of vacation for me is to relax i want to explore a little i want to breathe i want to maybe delve into some casual debauchery so yeah i think i'm not a huge itinerary person like i think a number of years back i think five six or seven years ago i went on this big trip with me and then two other families that are like were really that like my family's really close with like two really like it it was a total of like 12 people uh wait let me do the 13 people it's a total of 13 people right doing the mental head count yeah so it was a total of 13 people and we had this rigid this very rigid itinerary and it kind of sucked <laughs> like the trip itself was fun because we went, went we went basically we went on like as we flew to vegas and for and i mean flying to vegas with five miners not the best idea but so we didn't we didn't spend long no, in vegas but not. we drove all around the southwest we went to like flagstaff and sedona in arizona we spent like two days in vegas didn't really do much because five miners um and then from there we went, went to, we went through like la and san francisco so it was a really great trip and like i saw a lot but one of the one things is like i really wanted to go see alcatraz in san francisco right because like it's, it's san francisco it's like it's like a thing it's one of the things in san francisco it wasn't on the itinerary and it made me mad because like it's alcatraz like it's it's like one of the it's one of the main san francisco things i wanted to see it but yeah well uh maybe one day yeah uh, unless you step in homeless people BCs. on the way out the airport <laughs> that's part of the charm lived in delhi part it's of nothing the, part of the san fran charm i lived in delhi seven people BCs. That, that that's that's whatever <laughs> oof yeah you you develop you develop thick skin by necessity that, you know a city in america would reach that point but apparently we have so. i mean all Good our cities know. started there at some point like for a while chicago was just known I for mean, open in the sewage. modern day i mean there's yeah. just really no excuse yeah come on san francisco it, it was very cold there though i remember like 
I got out of the car and I was like, hey, it's 60. De- it's like not. It was like 55 degrees in July. Which is it's not very many degrees. Like, it's both amazing and also like it was it was like if I knew about it, I would have loved it, but I didn't know. And so it was horrible. But because you probably were. It's California. Yeah. It's going to be sunny. It's a sunshine and warm. state. Gonna, yeah. It's a lie. be. Nope. Hot. It was. No. See, that's one of the things where like I wouldn't mind living in San Francisco just because like that kind of weather in the summer, even if it's only for a little while, it's like getting just a break from the heat. Like, I'll be amazing. That'd be amazing. Yeah. I mean, San Francisco is on the list of cities I would consider living in at some point. Uh, I would ever, I would never, absolutely never live there. Like, so for me, it's like the cities are like DC's. I mean, DC, I mean, I've lived in, it, like, I've lived around DC for a long time, but I want to like live in the city. Uh, New York, Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco. Those are like some of the cities I wouldn't mind living in. Oh, God. Yeah, no. I would never do half of those. Would you do any of them? Be honest. I, I would live in. I would. I know. I would live in DC. I probably will live in DC mm. at some point. Okay. Also, London's one of the cities I want to live in at some point, which would be nice. To be honest, I'd rather not live in a city at all. But I mean, like, if I had to live in a city, I wouldn't choose one of those. That's fair. I feel like you pick like Boise or something. I exactly. I wouldn't pick one of those cities that's uh so big that the the common man economics and political decisions have ruined them like the like san francisco is a perfect example yeah this is me from, it's more a matter of the the line of work i want to go into almost requires me to live in a city because yeah the same here yeah. that's that's probably why yeah. i say i'll live in uh dc nova yeah. at some point yeah in my life yeah so was that about wrap up your 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 bit on the discussion Autobahn? Uh, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. We, we we've gone a few tabs in deep, like we've gone down like a, a YouTube rabbit hole, and now we got to reemerge from the hole. And let's talk about the the roller coaster hellscape that has been the last month and a half for me. It's it's been oh boy, a lot. I'm not I'm not gonna go like super into detail, but. I'm trying to think so all of Rightly ramadan so. happened which was like that was a thing like like the whole yeah, I, meant to, I meant to say happy id yeah thank you thank you so yeah all of ramadan happened uh eve happened you know fit there the an interesting the interesting thing about eve right is that eve is the arabic word eve, for festival so I, I really feel like it should just be called fitter but that's not a word that people who don't have familiarity with arabic have any ability to pronounce because it doesn't have a vowel before the r so it's like F-I-T-R, which is a really weird thing for people that aren't familiar with Arabic to pronounce. But so like Eid means festival, right? So like celebration. So the, the, the one that happened recently is the celebration of the breaking of the fast or fast breaking, which is the end of Ramadan. There's another one called Eid al-Adha, which is like signifies all the Joseph and the sheep and then that whole Bible story. Um, Lamo. So like that's like the festival, the sacrifice and so it's like Christmas and Easter. It's one of those things where like people get they're like, oh, which Eid? And that that it's just it's a tangent that annoys me every year. Um, but <laughs> which is like why I don't get why we call it Eid. We should call it Al Fitr and Al Adha. But beside the point. So that all happened. Uh, I actually I fa- I only missed two or three days from all of Ramadan, which I think is pretty good. Uh, I missed two to take a final, and one because I wasn't feeling well. So. I think all things considered, that that went pretty well. I ate out a lot more than I wanted to, in large part because, oddly enough, when I'm very when you're very hungry, you have a lot less motivation to cook, especially when you have to clean right after. Oh, I understand that so, because you want to eat now. You don't yeah. want to worry about all the cooking pers- and then not uh, to mention the thought, stuff. the thought of cleaning after breaking my f- fast is hellish to me. And this is my shout out to my mom and all of the muslim moms that have to do that massive thanks all the all the blessings you're great thank you thanks mom for cleaning after breaking fast even though you just become so sluggish and like sleepy and tired because like you've suddenly filled your body with food after having not eaten for a while so your body's like oh i have to rev up these rusty old digestive machines so yeah so i was eating out a lot more than i wanted to but i ended up and that's just, that's just how it is. really do be like that, though. It, it do, it do. 
<laughs> so, and then I was planning on going to visit my uncle on Eve, right? Like I have an uncle that lives nearby and we're going to spend it together because normally for like Eve is the thing I look forward to most, just like going to like the mosque, not really to pray, although like, I mean, the prayer is part of it, but also like I get to catch up with people without actually catching up with them. Like, I get to see who's still alive and if any major events have happened, but I don't have to like actually like give them my whole life story if it was like a family yeah. function. Because it's like everyone's there. So because like normally I go to a it's a prayer service that's held that's held at this one hotel every year that's for the Bangladeshi community in the area. Like it's just managed by like the elders of the community, and then the imam that like um, officiates it is like super chill. Like he's a nice guy and he gives he gives very interesting talks, like he gives very thought provoking talks. Like, so the way, the way it'll be, like, there'll be the prayer, and then afterwards, like, the imam will talk for a while, and, we'll, like, they'll just give, like, a, like a TED Talk. Like, a religious TED Talk. I was gonna say, does he then thank you for coming to his TED Talk? <laughs> I think he once he did, jokingly. No, this one's he's super chill. Like, I like him a lot. So it'll kind of kind of suck not to be able to, like, not being able to go and, go and see that. But I spent it by myself, which was kind of a weird feeling. So I made, so I made a cactus arrangement. That, that's how I celebrated <laughs> I I got what I affectionately call Shrek hentai cacti, um, and uh, and then some cacti labeled. Or that's, that's that's a succulent. It's called an ogre. It's actually called an ogre ear. Like that's you actually tell what your the plant parents is called. This and then explain what all of those things mean to them. I mean, I sent I sent my mom a picture and she said it looked nice. <laughs> yeah, but you should tell her that you call it Shrek hentai cacti. I'm good. I'm good. I think I think I'll not do that. <laughs> I think you sh- I think you should. I think she'd be really intrigued. At, you know, I think uh, at what art forms uh, those names represent. See, the way I see it, you know, maybe if like she's at the end of her line and she needs one last thing to push her over, I'll just say that. Then done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. Uh, my brother, if you hear this, don't Japanese tell mom I culture. said that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was gonna say that sounds like something that my mom, any mom, would freak out about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so rightfully so. Yeah, right, but... very, very rightfully so. Legal at sleepdrunk.net. I, I am not planning to turn aside. Uh, yeah, legal at sleepdrunk.net. That, that's a word and a half. Um, I mean, it, it is a word. The the, the it, killing I, of this, parents. Yeah, like regicide, the killing of a king. Is side and then a Latin prefix. It's a word. Um, I think it's matricide, not maternicide. But. Yeah, One that's, of the two. that's the that's the word. Yeah. Matricide. Or is matri- I, I think matricide Which might sounds... be your spouse. Because matrimony is marriage. Oh, true, true, true. I think it would be maternal side. I've heard that one before. Yeah. I, th- I think matricide would be killing your spouse. Correction. Matricide is defined by the American Heritage Dictionary as the act of killing one's mother. So, I don't plan any side of any kind. No siding. No siding here. Maybe today. pesticide. Maybe pesticide and herbicides, maybe. And like fungicides. I don't plan any kind of mammalicide. I think that's a word. I don't want to kill any mammals. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not a word, I made it a word. Uh, that we can make we can make that the show title, mammalicide. Um, <laughs> the episode title. So, what was I talking about? Eid, right? So I got actually you do because you're eating like you eat meat. I'm not the one doing the killing. I'm the one doing the eating. Right, but you're engaging in it. I'm supporting it. I'm not engaging in it. Engage it like I'm not holding the yeah, knife. You're, Someone you're still else still supporting it. You're still supporting it. But I, I wouldn't argue. I, th- I wouldn't say it's the same thing as it was like committing it. I'm just supporting it. I mean, yeah, but you're still a partner in crime. You're, you're an accomplice. Okay, I don't plan on engaging in any sapia side. Killing any humans. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th- I think I don't plan on killing. I don't. I don't want to engage in a homicide. There we go. I don't want to commit a homicide. homicide. That yes. We have we have come full circle to a common word. I'm not killing anyone. <laughs> but so Eve, Good. right? So I got I got Good. my I got my Shrek hentai cacti. Then I got some succulents that were labeled um pork and beans, which I just found kind of funny because like beans. Beans. Um. <laughs> Uh, and then I got like a little little ball cactus, so I like arranged them around I see the ball nothing cactus. Has changed. <laughs> nope. Um, I mean, I did quit coffee for a month, which wasn't that bad. Like the first two days were horrible, and then I was I was fine. So I, like I didn't yeah. didn't have coffee for like a month. Uh, that was that was something. I pretty much limited myself to one, maybe maybe two cups a day. So I pretty much would be fine without it. Yeah. I, I had much more than that, especially especially like during night classes in the apartment. 
where like my bed is like less than a hundred feet away, it's it it was a useful crutch to get through classes and to get through finals. So yeah, yeah, I, I quit coffee for all of Ramadan, and also at some point in Ramadan, I had a had an interesting. I feel like it's just a thing where at the end of every spring semester, something's got to happen with my car. Just something's got to happen. Last time a tire went out. This time, um, I was driving down what my friend Max affectionately calls the worst road on the planet, which is Route 66. Um, so I'm driving down it. It's late at night. Uh, not that late. It was like 9.30. Uh, and there's a patch of construction. So I'm driving, doing my usual thing. Going, I was going the speed limit. I was not speeding. I was going the normal speed limit. And from what I could tell, a cargo vehicle decided that it would be appropriate to deposit their cargo that may or may not have been unsecured um, in my lane ahead of me. I mean, they chose to do that. Um, and of course, this cargo also happened to be dark and like not super tall, so it didn't appear in my headlights until it was it was significantly close, close enough to where I the most people would not be able to react to it. And so that decided to um, give a very high-speed hug to my bumper. A nice high-speed hug. Um, and then engage in coital relations with one of my bumpers, leaving the, leaving the, um, the grill lower plastic grate thing, leaving that somewhere on Route 66. And then deciding to um, impregnate my radiator with pebbles. Ah. So I did have my car for a week. I wanted to make a joke about depositing cargo and taking it. Dump. But then I realized that I am nowhere near having to do that. <laughs> so it just wasn't an apt time. And it, it would never would be. So now I'm just telling you. You're a failure, Alex. You failed. Yeah. At life. I, I did. You might want to commit sapiocide. You should just commit sapiocide. All right. Who am I killing? Uh, these nuts. I don't think that's safe side. Got him. <laughs> what was I talking? My car. Right. So, yeah. So I, I had to take my car to a shop. For what it's worth, Progressive. They, they they're good. They're they're pretty good to me. It was a very easy process. That like I was super nervous, but it was fine. I was like, hey, this happened. Like ah, cool. We'll send a truck. They sent a truck. They grabbed it. It's, it's fine now. The horn... They, I think they had to swap out the horn. So the horn sounds weird and I'm not used to it. But other than that, it's fine. Like... Oof. Yeah, like, it's, it's not as loud. You're gonna join a weird horn gang? No, it sounds like a normal horn, just quieter. <laughs> mine sounds like a normal horn, just not like it did when I got the car. Yeah. I don't know. I, I never had mine replaced or anything. It just... It sounds different. At some point, just stopped functioning normally. Yeah, I mean, it just... It sounds different. And like, I just have to get used yeah. to it. But it's fine. So... That that's that that was that 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 sucked. <laughs> that really sucked. And then like I was, I never realized how much I ne- how much I needed my car even during quarantine, until it was gone. Like mm-hmm. even just the act of taking a drive, especially because gas prices are low now. Who am I not to take advantage of that? <laughs> um, yeah, they're definitely rising again. But it was just super nice while they were low. Up around here, they're still under a dollar, under two dollars. I was gonna say what? <laughs> they're still under two dollars. <laughs> Yeah, so they're, like, they're at about a dollar sixty-five in my area, yeah. which is the cheapest I know of. Like my area is mm-hmm. always the cheapest that I know yeah. of, but they made it down to about, I think a dollar eighteen at the lowest. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm probably gonna refill my tank. Even my tank isn't low right now, but I'm probably just gonna refill it just because I figure that once restrictions yeah, are eased, they're going up. Yeah, so once restrictions are eased, prices are gonna go back up. So, <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Uh, so yeah, I, I very miss. I miss my car for that week like badly. You should you should go to Walmart yeah. and buy a bunch of jerry, jerry cans. cans. <laughs> I think there's like, isn't it illegal to carry a jerry can of gas in your car for any like extended amount of time? Well, you can just go uh, bring it in the apartment. They wouldn't have any qualms <laughs> with that. I'll just like hide it under Michael's bed. Say say it's his. <laughs> yeah, have fun. Also, Michael getting moved it out. In there. So like. I could did you ever make do a double the, uh, bed. Did you ever do the bed thing? No, I didn't. Because the weird thing is, I've been spending I've been spending very little time in my room, just because now that I have the whole apartment. Yeah. Why? Yeah, I like mean, I, I'd why spend a lot of time in the living spread room. Spread your zones out. Sometimes I sit on your former roommate's bed just because I can. 
and like i don't feel like being in the living room so i'll just sit there i'll chill there it's great i don't feel like being in the living room that's that's all too relatable so because it's like at a point where i'm staying inside all the time the living room is gonna get boring so yeah like i i've just been i basically i spend almost all of my time in my room because the living room in my house is just not a place i want to be with the current state of yeah. the television yeah so I, I just get to the point where i just i don't want to be in my room but there's nowhere else for me to go so i just sit in my room and ponder how much i don't want to be in my room <laughs> nor do i want to do anything else like the other day, I was sitting here programming, right? I'm programming in JavaScript for a, a project, but that's not really necessary to say, I guess. But uh, I was like, wow, I don't want to do this anymore. So I thought about it for a minute. I'm like, I don't really want to watch YouTube either. So let me just sit back and uh, listen to music and just vibe, you know? And I was like, you know what? I don't really want to listen to music, so I just turned it off and I just kind of sat there and looked at the wall because I didn't want to scroll through Reddit either. I, I've, I hit that point a little while ago as well. Like, for the first time, I was like, wow, there's just nothing I want to do. It's just like, <laughs> like, like, like pure boredom. Like, pure, like, distilled <laughs> boredom. Yeah. That's what I felt. Like, like, that's the absolute most of it I think I've ever felt at one time. Like, I think... I think I've gotten through. I'm almost done with my tenth season of NCIS. Like, it's, oh my god! I've been trying to start The Wire because like my brother recommended it and said it was a really it's, good it's show. It's a very critically acclaimed show. It, yeah, and that's what I hear. But like, I don't know. I've made it about two episodes in, and I'm just I don't feel the urge to go back. I guess I just I don't want to. The the next thing that I take on doing, I don't want it to be something where I look at my computer screen yeah. because everything else I yeah. do is already doing that. Yeah. I feel that like I've watched so much. The amount of times I've heard Mark Harbin say, "Gear up, we got a dead marine in X place." Oh my god! Dead marine in Quantico, dead marine in Norfolk, dead marine in Arlington, dead marine. Uh, uh, there's one in like Pennsylvania. But most of them are in like Norfolk or Quantico. <laughs> like, ch- like, come on, it's a major naval base. Stop letting your marines die. <laughs> That's mostly why. Uh, we decided to go on Operation Stay on Our Own Property, which I can explain to you after the show. I mean, I mean, I think you told me about it over text. Did I? Yeah, you did. Either over text or you sent me a voice message. Um. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll confirm with you after yeah. the show. But <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I've also I've been playing a lot more guitar, which I think is one of the big benefits is that i have like i've advanced quite a bit like i've hit my my hendrix phase where i'm playing nothing but stuff by Jimi hendrix so i've learned purple haze i've learned voodoo child slight return which is hard but not as hard as people think also got like a proper amp for my guitar finally got a fender mustang lt25 did that come in yeah it arrived it's fantastic it's it's, and also it was used but the used was the used was somebody else had a shipping label on it before mine that was it. It was factory fresh out of it. And it's amazing. It's a Bro. ton of fun and it's great. There's all sorts of fun effects. So I've been playing around with that. I've also been working on my blues soloing because I think that's like one of the easiest places to start soloing. That's something just I remember from my saxophone learning process is that the blues are a very nice place to start learning how to solo. Again, you've made me really want to get an electric, but like I said, I just can't justify it based on how much I play my guitar. Yeah. And I haven't really done anything new on my guitar. And honestly, I haven't even touched my guitar that much as of late like i've started picking it back up and doing some new things um not new things just doing some things in the past like literally the past three days but before that i literally just went for a month or so without touching it speaking from experience i think it's important to like at least with any musical thing is to have something always have something you can just like do like not even like like a song or just like for example i always just just like a little thing to play just to like or like like a scale like Think like okay i'm gonna get good at this scale and then even if you play it for 15 minutes a day it's just a matter of playing consistently especially also on guitar that maintains your calluses like yeah that was the thing i yeah. noticed when i st- when i played the first day is that like your calluses like, are gone wow my fingers are in pain after yeah. i finished so i think just learn i think it's not just learn if you like learn like a pentatonic scale and a major scale and just practice those like just pick it up even if it's for 10 minutes a day that's better than nothing and I think over yeah. time with consistency, you'll get inspiration. And I think that's a 
just general good long because I think a lot of music isn't super super fun a lot of it's just kind of like working on your rudiments but those create the foundation to have a good time and like really advance yeah and so i've been like working on my scales been working on my like har- like harmonic technique and just building things like that and so also like i said another thing is learning I believe i got my harmonics okay. down i actually i did the uh, not to cut you off or anything yeah, but I, I, I just wanted to quickly interject mm-hmm. um i got I, this new harmonic thing where like you can move it further down the fret yeah, by harmonic. holding a finger. Yeah, yeah, those are cool. Those are used a lot in like math rock. Those are fun. Or another thing you can do is practice improv. Like, I'll send you a video. I'll put in the show notes. Actually, there's a video that was really, really good. Um, that really got me in the door for guitar improv, because the traditional way of learning how to improvise on an instrument is you just kind of get a like you get, you learn a scale and then you just kind of like figure out how to be creative with the scale, but really nice analogy that i haven't heard anywhere really anywhere else in the music world is that your scales are your letters improvisation is a language right so just because you know letters doesn't mean you know words doesn't mean you know phrases so it's better to like think of the scales as your letters and build a vocabulary improvisationally so that's like through licks through different kinds of techniques and stuff like that so i'll say i'll I'll, I'll put in the show so it was a really nice video that showed it just showed a basic what I think of like as a sandbox to improvise in. That was a really nice start. So I'll, I'll, that will be in all the places where the thing where the links are. But that was super helpful. I forgot who it was by, but yeah, it'll definitely be there. But that got me in the door. And I think improvising is a thing because it, it lets you have fun while still letting you practice new things. So that is a great thing to learn to just keep going and sustain your momentum. So yeah, but yeah. That's what I've been doing on guitar a lot. Is I've been playing play my hendrix and hendrix is so much fun to play like yeah it, it, it's it sounds like something all those would be things fun where to play. you can't play hendrix on an acoustic and there's a reason like there's only two existing recordings of Jimi hendrix playing an acoustic and it's for good reason because his techniques require very thin strings like i'm talking like two note bends and like oh it's it's so much fun though so yeah another reason why i prefer electric is because like you can play hendrix but yeah they're just yeah they're more uh, capable i yeah. suppose although i have been looking at potentially picking up an acoustic within the next year or two just like because there are certain things like for example i've also been learning a lot of bossa nova and bossa nova does not sound the same on an electric like even with an acoustic sim it just does not sound nearly as nice as it does on either a very nice hollow body electric or an acoustic and i love 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 bossa nova music so that's one thing where i'm like you know what that might be something worth looking at. And that is also benefited by the fact that I think my last little tangent, even though more has happened, but nothing nothing super noteworthy. Uh, I, as of today, I've started a new form of employment. Uh, oh? Okay, I've started delivering for a service called Instacart. Oh, I've heard of that. Which is basically someone will send you a grocery list, then you go to the groceries, you get them their stuff, and you deliver it to their place. And I am aware that given the current situation, it might not be be a 100% safe line of employment, but I feel like I'm at a point where grocery stores are probably the single most sanitized place in the world, or at least accessible to the layman. Yeah. And not to mention I'm taking all the best practices, like I'm wearing gloves and I'm using copious amounts of hand sanitizer and a mask, so I'm being as safe as possible, and I figure that for a lot of people they're elderly or immunocompromised and it's probably not safe for them to go to the grocery store, so I'm helping people. So I've started doing that. Today was my first day. Um, right in the middle of my very first order, my sim stopped working. So your sim, oh, you're like your phone sim. Yeah, my phone sim stopped working. That was interesting. That must be fun. Uh, so what I did was I put my cart to the side and bought a pack of pushpins <laughs> to open up my phone and fix my sim. So that was interesting. And also I picked a very large first order. Um, with very, very specific... Like, I found that Instacart shoppers, they have very specific needs. Like, this one guy, like, wanted a large, large amount of butternut squash soup from a carton, which is hard to find. Another person put toilet paper, which, like, you think I'm gonna find toilet paper, <laughs> bud? <laughs> no. Good one, bud. <laughs> so, God, I can't stand that. It's it's just, at this point, it's infuriating. People just stop. Yeah. Like, the shelves is are still... It's Target for all the 
like the bleach wipes, hand sanitizer, soap, paper goods, gone, cleared out. Like, come on. It's been two months. Stop. You're not helping the situation at like, all. Like, what? Are you already out of toilet? Like, how are you using that all much toilet paper? All you're doing is making it so people can't wash their hands like they should be doing, or cleaning stuff like they should be doing, or wiping their ass. Okay, like, are you happy with that? Are you are you proud of yourself? Like, are are you eating only Chipotle? Like, what is going on? Come on. <laughs> nah, I feel like like I feel like that's not even a, a good ex- a good enough excuse. Like. Are you, like you, just, you, you must just, like, be substituting beer for water. You're like, jeez. <sighs> but yeah, so they were out of toilet paper at the store. So I just like, I was just like, yeah, no, that's not happening. So I just refunded the item. But that's been interesting. I'll probably, I'll probably be able to put some Instacart adventures up soon because uh, me and my good friend Max, he's the one that told me about it because his mom told him because we're both kind of like thinking that we're not going to be doing much this summer. We should work, right? Because internships were canceled. Um, yeah. And so we were both looking at places and first we were both thinking about like coffee shops, but then Max's mom told about Instacart and I was like, all right, cool, I'll do this too. And so we're thinking about going on like like team expeditions where we like like split the earnings and then shop twice as fast. So yeah, well Yeah, and then you have like a shopping buddy yeah. while you're at it. Yeah, I'm it'll, it'll be more entertaining, it'll be less boring. Like Exactly. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So also safe. Let me know how that goes. Yeah, like, for sure. For sure. That could be a viable form yeah. of entertainment. Yeah, especially because, like, gas is cheaper now. So, all the more reason, right? Yeah. Um, But, yeah, it's been, uh, maybe in a couple weeks we'll have Instacart Adventures with Lavi. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Yeah. Also, Safeway is just the best place for Instacart because they, they say what aisles think. So, normally, they'll group it by, like, categories. They'll be like, oh, produce and dairy and et cetera, right? But the groupings aren't always correct. But at Safeway, they give you the aisles. So you can say, oh, I'll this. So you can be faster, Ooh. which means you get bigger tips. That's been nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think that's basically everything. So <laughs> Sutra Podcast can be found yeah. on any of your favorite podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and more. Um, and don't forget and, to share the uh, show. Don't, yeah, no. don't forget to share the show. Help family, friends, anybody who think you might enjoy. Uh, your your Instacart, Instacart delivery person. Shoppers. Maybe it's me. <laughs> Yeah, Uh, and uh, we will catch you next week. We will catch you next week.